What's up everyone, Scott the Trihammer here, back with another Tackle Box edition, and finally got the third set in the series that I started a year ago talking about what makes fishing possible, the rod, the line, and now the reels. So I know I said this in the video about rods, and I said it in the video about lines, and I'm going to link both of those videos in the description below, but for this one we're going to focus on the fishing reels themselves. And what I said in those other videos is think of it as a car, and you probably heard other fishermen say the same thing, describe it as a car. So you have your fishing rod that is your chassis. You want a good, strong, sturdy chassis that can handle what you're going to do with your vehicle. You want good quality tires and wheels, and that's what your fishing line is to get the job done in different terrains and in different scenarios. And your reels, these are the engines. These are the powerhouses. They're the ones that make things go. With that being said, describing the reel as the engine, so if there is anything that I would say spend the most money on, you don't have to spend a lot of money on fishing, but if there's anything that you feel like you should break the bank on, you want a good quality, whatever component to fishing, it's definitely the reel. A good quality reel, you know, don't want to really just say a more expensive reel, but a quality reel is going to last you a lot longer, it'll do a lot more for you, you'll be a lot more satisfied, and you'll find it's probably a lot more effective also. So now I've plenty of times just bought cheap $20 reels and they last me like two months. And I've got some reels here that cost, you know, upwards of $80 that have lasted me a really long time. So in this video, we're going to focus on the two basic examples of reels. You have your spinning reel and your casting reel. There are other reels out there like fly reels, but those are for fly fishing. You only use those as a fly rod. Completely different setup. Not what we're going to talk about in this video. There's a reel that exists out there that is a combination of a spinning and a casting reel called a spin casting reel. I hate spin casting reels. They are so hard to manage. They got this housing inside them. They're easy to backlash and you gotta take the whole thing apart to get rid of a bird's nest. And generally they don't work that well as these reels here. These are a lot more user friendly. So again, I'm not gonna talk about the spin casting reel. If you like the spin casting reel and you're good with it, all power to you. I don't understand how you do it. <laughs> so to identify the different reels, so spinning reel looks like this. It's got a vertical facing baler and it's got a one crank on the side and that's what it does. The whole baler spins around the spool to uh, take your line back onto the spool and goes off of the spool when you open the baler. A casting reel has a spool that has a line going directly toward your rod and has a crank on the side. And the crank with the casting reel is typically, you know, just like two handles like this. Some just have the one handle, the other one's like a counterweight. But that's, that's the basic difference between a spinning reel and a casting reel. So let's go over the different components of the different reels. So for a spinning reel, the first component you're going to see here is the baler. That's this bar that goes across the spool, and when you turn the crank, it turns the baler, not the spool itself. That's one of the things that's different between a spinning reel and a casting reel. And the purpose of that baler is to pull the line through the guides and the, uh, goes perpendicular to the rod. So the spool has a line going this way, but the rod is facing that way. The baler is what puts that line back on the spool as it spins around. So you click open the baler when you're going to cast, and that puts the entire spool in the free spool because it just flies off of the spool on its own. That's what the line does. You click it back over when you got your lure to or your bait where you want it to go, and then you start spinning off of that. Uh, a lot of spinning, well, all spinning reels, if you open the baler, the crank will automatically click the baler back over. I personally recommend that you do that manually. Your hand's going to be there anyway. Might as well do that. It helps save the mechanism. And then obviously the difference with the spinning reel to the casting reel is the spool is fixed. The only way the spool turns is with the drag system. And that's something that's also different with the spinning reel. This is the fighting drag up here. So you turn the drag. So say, say your rod is pointing this way. You, and you're looking at your drag this way, you turn it counterclockwise to loosen the drag, and that makes it easier for line to pull out from, or for the spool to turn if the fish is fighting, and then you turn it clockwise to tighten the drag. Some reels also have a reverse drag. This is what this reel has, a rear drag here. So like this, this reel, you can kind of hear uh, how I got the drag set up, and that clicker is letting you know the drag is going out. That's going to be critical for something I'm going to talk about later on in this video, but that shows that the uh, this is the fighting drag up here. The rear drag, you flip the switch down here, and you have a different drag switch that you can have a different drag on the line. That's really good for uh, fishing that you leave bait on the bottom for a long time and with fish that you don't want to know they have a hook in their mouth, like carp and sturgeon. So that's why uh, reels with the rear drag are a lot better for those scenarios because you can leave the 
rear drag on, have it turned down real low so the fish can pull line away, doesn't feel resistance at all. You hear that clicker going, you flip that back over, now the fish is hooked, and then you just start fighting. Spinning reels also have a lot bigger crank on one side, but one thing you can do with the crank on a spinning reel is you can flip it to the other side. So if you're right-handed like I am, and you hold your rod in your right hand and you reel with your left hand, you know, the reel is set up like that for you. But if you're left-handed and you want to hold it in your right hand and reel, you take this lock off the side. And some spinning reels have different mechanisms to switch sides, but this is how this one works. Take that off. Take the crank out, put it on the other side, screw the lock back in, and now you've got it set up for a left-handed fisherman. But left-handed I am not, so I am switching this back over. Something else you can do with the spinning reel, if you don't want to have your uh, rods sort of tangle up on each other, if you use a lot of spinning reels, is uh, where you have that crank in the locked in position on that one side, you can loosen that lock, and then the crank will sort of drop down that way and you can pin it down, close it up, and then it has a lot lighter, a lot smaller profile for travel. But when you're fishing, you definitely want to make sure that lock is nice and secure because you can leave that loose and as you reel, you bang around that bolt that keeps that part of the crank mechanism together. You lose that part, you lose the reel. And then the speed of the reel and then line capacity is also listed down below on the label. So you see the speed the speed of this where it says the gear ratio is 5 to 1, 5.0 to 1. The way you translate that is the, that's the speed of the reel. That's how many revolutions the spool takes, or in this case the baler takes, per one revolution of the crank. So with one revolution of the crank, that baler goes around five times. And then also they tell you the line capacity on the side there, how much for different... Uh, diameters of line you might use. And another mechanism that spinning rods have is they have the switch in the front and what that switch does is in the lock position toward the angler it keeps the spool from or keeps the baler and the crank from going backwards so line would go out if you're fighting a fish but if you need line if you need to give yourself some more line out you flip that switch over to the side and now the reel can or the baler can go in any direction it allows you to pull line off without using the drag. So the difference with the casting reel now so a casting reel doesn't have a baler because the spool is perpendicular to the rod, so the line is parallel to the rod. The way that works is when you turn the crank, see that, see that uh, hole in the front? That is your level line. That is sort of the baler of a casting reel. So as you turn the crank, it turns that baler side to side to evenly wind the line across the spool. Then of course the spool here goes, uh, like I said, it goes perpendicular to the rod, so the line goes parallel to the rod. The drag on a casting reel is the star dial on the crank. So when you uh, turn the crank forward, you're tightening the drag. When you turn the crank back toward you, you're loosening the drag. Other mechanisms that casting reels have, there is a spool tension knob, and that allows the uh, tension of the spool when it's in free spool to be... Uh, lighter or looser, <clears throat> excuse me, lighter or looser, and the way you put it into free spool mode is you push this button in the back, and that turns the spool, or that takes the lock off, it's sort of like that lock on the spinning reel, but that's what you use when you cast the reel, so you put your thumb down, and you keep your thumb on the spool, and as you cast, you release tension, you don't take your thumb off of the spool, uh, unless you're really experienced, you've been using the reel for a long time, and you got it dialed in just right, keep your thumb on the spool, and then you, uh, apply more tension as you're getting to your target casting spot and then you turn the crank and that clicks back up and then the spool is locked again. Casting reels also use a uh, magnetic system, magnetic brake system on the side. Most casting reels have six brakes, some have more, some have less, but this dial here shows you how many brakes are activated on the reel and you want to use a number of magnetic brakes depending on the size of lure you're using. So if you're using a heavier lure, you want to turn it up to be uh, heavier on the brakes. If you're using a lighter lure, you want to turn the brakes down. And a lot of that comes with tuning a casting reel based on the lure you're using. And I'm going to do that later in the video. I'll show you guys how to do that. 
So you're probably thinking, what reel is better for what scenario? Well, both reels actually have a lot of applications in a lot of different scenarios. Both reels are necessary because a spinning setup is good for this type of fishing. A casting setup is good for this type of fishing. Bring both. Don't think that the spinning reel is something that you only use for one type of fishing and the casting reel is one thing you only use for another type of fishing. They can cross paths. They both have their pros and cons and that's what we're going to get into now. So what are some of the pros and cons of different reels? So some of the pros of a spinning reel, spinning reels typically have, typically have a lot of power. The most common application for spinning reels is bait fishing. That's what I use a lot of my spinning reels for, but it can be used for other things. So you're typically catching a lot bigger fish with a spinning setup. So you have a lot uh, more powerful rods. So you're gonna have a reel that has a lot more power. With that, that means spinning reels have a lot higher drag. Typically they have a lot higher drag. So this reel here, this is the size 40B Okuma Avenger. This thing has a maximum drag of 19 pounds, whereas this Luz Laser MG Speed Spool has a maximum drag of nine pounds. So this is able to fight a lot bigger fish than this one is. And in the sturgeon video I did, I was using the full size Avenger reel from Okuma. It was the 65 size. And that thing has a maximum drag of 40 pounds. That's how I was able to fight that big sturgeon. And I already demonstrated how spinning reels reversible. That's another pro that the spinning reel has. But a lot of the spinning reels, they're just easier to use. I mean, a lot easier to use. They're kind of idiot proof. I mean, you just got to know how to operate the baler and the crank. That's about it. Spinning reels are also really good for finesse fishing. That's if you don't have to cast very far because you can just open the spool, let your line drop in front of you, or for small short casts, and you get a lot more accurate short casts with a spinning reel. Some of the cons of a spinning reel, they are slow, and that's with the gear ratio. A lot of spinning reels don't have to be fast, so they don't make them fast. Like, this is a 5 to 1 gear ratio versus the Laser MG Speed Spool, in the name Speed Spool, it is a 7.1 to 1 gear ratio. This is a much faster reel than this one. And that's because a lot of spinning applications are for bait fishing and whatnot, so you don't really need a lot of speed, you just need a lot of power. Another disadvantage that spinning reels have it, they are bulky. When you take a lot of rods fishing with you and you're a bank fisherman like me, you don't have a boat that you can lay them out so they're organized and they don't get tangled, the spinning rods are the ones that get tangled up in everything. And it's because the reel is so much bulkier. Another disadvantage of the spinning reel versus the casting reel, they're not as accurate. And the reason being is because on a spinning rod, the guides are a lot bigger and the guides are a lot further away from the rod. And the reason is because that baler takes big wide swoops as it brings the line back through onto the spool. So the eyes have to be bigger. That means you have less accurate casts if you're trying to uh, finesse fish, which, you know, with finesse fishing then on a spinning rod, you just want to do those small short casts or just let it drop. But if you're going for distance, these things are pretty good, but they're not very accurate. Another disadvantage of the spinning reel is you feel less bites on a spinning reel. I've actually switched to a lot of spinning rods that have an open handle on the uh, behind the reel, so I've got my palm directly on the core of the rod, so I feel a lot more through the rod. But besides that, if you're going to try to feel a bite, you gotta you got to bring your baler over to the right position, grab the line, then wait. It's just a lot more steps, and you, te you tend to feel less bites on a spinning setup anyway. But the biggest con of a spinning reel is they break often. There's a lot more mechanisms, there's a lot more going on here, there's a lot of parts that break a lot more often on a spinning reel. Can't tell you how many times I've had that spring that keeps the baler in position and locks in position. Can't really tell you how many times I've had that thing break. Then on to the casting reel. Number one advantage of the casting reel, like I said earlier, versus a spinning reel, they are fast. So this one, this reel has a... 7.1 to 1 gear ratio. That means when I turn the crank one time, that spool makes 7.1 revolutions. A lot faster, a lot easier to use when you're uh, bait fish or when you're lure fishing, particularly for bass, which is why you see a lot of bass fishermen use the uh, low profile casting reels like this. Another advantage of the casting reel is they are extremely accurate. So the line doesn't have a lot of room of variation. Doesn't a lot of have it doesn't have a lot of room to play as it comes off of the spool. So you have a lot more accurate cast as you're casting. And that's also because the guides, because it doesn't have to move very far, the guides are a lot smaller and a lot closer to the rod. And now they're making rods that have micro eyelets. Have you seen those things? Those are pretty amazing. One of my favorite advantage of the uh, casting reel versus the spinning reel is the low profile. And I mean, it's here's here's how you see the difference. I mean, this thing is twice as tall off of the rod 
as a low profile casting reel. There are full size casting reels, but even the full size casting reels have a lower profile than spinning reels do. Another big advantage of a casting reel is they are very castable. I mean, casting reel, you get it? But it's because it's a lot easier action for casting because whereas for the spinning reel, you gotta get your lure up to the right position on the rod, grab the line, flip the baler, cast, let go of the line, wait till it gets to your spot, then flip the baler back over, then start reeling. This is just click, cast, turn, that fast. Which is again why the casting reels are really popular among bass fishermen because they make a lot of casts, a lot of retrieves over and over again, saves the joints of your body. But the biggest advantage in my mind of a casting reel, and it is my favorite advantage of a casting reel, is how you feel more bites on a casting reel. So a lot of fishermen, when they grab a casting reel, they put their finger uh, and they sort of hold that trigger position on the, uh, the rod like a trigger, and they put their thumb behind the spool and they, they fish the entire time that way. What I do is I palm my casting reel, and that what that allows me to do is that allows me to keep my finger right under the line as it comes across the baler. So the entire time I have a finger on the line feeling everything that's happening with that lure at the end of the line. So casting reels are a lot more effective for bite detection. Some of the cons of a casting reel though, they have really low power. So they are not meant to fight big fish and they typically have lower drags than spinning reels. One thing you can do with a casting reel that sort of supplements your drag is as you're fighting a fish, you know, like how I do here, move back to that trigger position, you know, do it carefully, don't lose your rod, move back to that trigger position, and then your thumb can sort of act as a supplemental drag. So you put more tension on your spool from your thumb as line is coming off from the drag when the fish is fighting. Another con of the casting reels, they are very high maintenance. They take a lot more time to clean, a lot more time to maintain, taking, a, taking it apart, putting oil on the bearings and putting oil on the brakes and oil around the spool. Uh, you know, when these things break, it's really expensive. So it takes a lot more to keep these things running well. Another con of the casting reel is they require experience. And that's something, again, I'm going to talk about later in this video, about tuning your reel based on the lure you're using. That takes experience. A casting reel, you know, pretty simple. I learned on a casting reel when I was a kid. I've been using this thing for 30 years almost. And that's, you know, it's, it's the reel a lot of people learn on. This takes more experience because you do have to tune it, otherwise you're gonna get backlashes, you're gonna bird's nest your reel, and it's really frustrating to have to deal with that over and over again, especially if you're trying to catch fish. But the biggest disadvantage of a casting reel, in my mind, they're not reversible. Whereas any spinning reel is reversible, you can turn that crank over to the other side. Casting reel, you can't do that. So this is actually the only uh, left-handed retrieve. For a casting reel, if it's a uh, left-handed retrieve, that means that you're going to retrieve with your left hand. Right-hand retrieve means you retrieve with your right hand. Uh, this is the only left-handed one I own, and I'm a right-handed fisherman, so it's, you know, the natural position for me. But if you want to have one on the other side and retrieve with your right hand, you have to buy a completely separate reel. So this I'm just going to call the duh part of the video is you want to pair your spinning reel with a spinning rod, and you want to pair a casting reel with a casting rod. Go, really should go without saying because it's it's the design of the reel and how it's meant to work with that rod. Like I said, the spinning reel has that big wider turn with the balers so the eyelets are bigger, the guides are further away from the rod. Uh, casting reel, you don't have to worry about that because of that level wind, so the eyelets are smaller and closer to the reel. If you put a casting reel with a spinning rod or a spinning rod with a casting reel, you're probably going to have problems. Okay, so now I'm going to take you over into my workshop and I'm going to show you how you put line on the different reels. So when you get to spool your line on your reel, they make these devices that you can like suction onto a table and they have this just this rod or this yeah rod on the side. You put the spool on and it allows it to turn as you put your line onto the spool of your reel. I mean, those, those are pretty expensive. I actually have gotten a set of these, and this costs about the same. I love these things. These are just the uh, real spool plastic containers from Plano. And the nice thing about them is because one thing that's critical when you're spooling a casting reel is you want your line to come off of the spool of line the same direction it's going to go on the, onto the spool from your reel. So if the line comes back up over the top of this spool, you want it to go back up and over the top of the spool on your reel. And that's something these containers allow because they've got these little uh, holes, these little rubber holes on the top for a uh, line to come over the top. Uh, I put my braided ones in this one because, I mean, obviously the braided spools are usually a lot bigger, a lot higher capacity, and the spots are on the bottom. It doesn't really matter with braid because it's a rope. It doesn't really twist. So the first one I'm going to show you how to spool is a spinning reel. So the first thing you want is a backing, and whatever you're going to use as a main line, if you're going to use like a, 
like a monofilament or a copolymer line as your main line. You don't really need a backing, but if you're going to use a braided line, you want to use a small amount of a really inexpensive line as a backing, usually about 20 feet. If you ask me, a lot easier way to do that, a way to save money and put more of the main line you want on your spool, just take some electrical tape, take a small strip and put it around the spool because braided line, it can turn on its own around that spool while you're fighting a fish or even while you're reeling. But that's why people put that backing of mono behind that so it doesn't uh, come off or doesn't turn on the spool like that. You know, a small strip of electrical tape will do the same thing. And I mean, do the math. Electrical tape costs like a dollar a roll versus line costs however much per foot you're going to use. So it saves money and it's a lot easier to do in my mind. So I'm actually, I'm not actually going to use this reel. I'm just using this reel for demonstration. I'm going to use a line I'm not actually going to use. I have some old copolymer here. I'm just going to use this 15, 15 pound lines of demonstration. So a lot of fishermen use the arbor knot when they put line onto a reel. And that's just an overhand knot with another small overhand knot on the tag end to lock it in place. I prefer the uni knot myself. Just a small, quick, simple uni knot because it takes up less space on the reel and you know it's pretty easy to tie so, you know get that nice and tight but a nice thing about the uni knot as a backing or as a knot to get onto your line is it works like a noose so you just slip it down get it tight onto the spool and that's not going to go anywhere and that uni knot's a lot smaller than the arbor knot is so you turn the baler over and change the angle on you here so the only disadvantage you have with uh, this setup like I have is sometimes these things can move forward. So you gotta, all you got to do then is put something heavy in the way. So just going to use a five pound weight to keep that in place. And then you just start turning line onto your spool. Go at a steady pace so it goes evenly because you can actually put uh, more line on one side of the spool versus the other if you don't reel at an even pace. So you know, this is kind of old dingy line, but it's going to look like that by the time you're done. And then you just clip off the end. And then to help keep your line under control, if you're going to store the reel for a while and store it away from your rod, or if you don't need the leader you used or the lure you used, and you want to make it a lot easier to transport the rods, they have this keeper on the bottom of the spool for the reel. So what you do is you just put that line in to hook it around that. You know, just get tight enough to stay in place. And, you know, that line's not going to go anywhere. So a word real quick on how much line to put on a reel. It depends on the kind of line you're using. A good rule of thumb is you want to leave about an eighth an inch of space from the edge of this lip right here to the top of the spool of line on your reel. And uh, again, that's more so on the type of line you're using. If you're using a copolymer line or, uh, well, if you're using a monofilament line, you could put more on here because uh, it's not going to fly off your reel as much. But monofilament line does have more memory. If you're using a copolymer line, it depends on how much fluorocarbon is in it. If it has a lot of fluorocarbon in it, you want to leave more space than less space because fluorocarbon does tend to fly off of a spinning reel. If you're using braided line, it's a rope. You can fill all the way to the edge of that spool, no problem. Now I'm going to show you how to spool up a casting reel. And this is my bait casting rod and reel. I actually tried making this video last night and I recorded a really awesome segment of putting line on this and the camera decided it didn't want to record. So I'm going to do it all over again. What I just did was I took the line off and uh, did it in a way to still demonstrate the cruciality of how you want to put line on a reel a specific way. But now let's get into spooling up the casting reel. I'm going to be changing the angle a lot on you guys as I do this, but I want you guys to notice something. So the spool of this reel has holes bored into the spool. That makes it so you can tie your line onto the spool directly with those holes, and it anchors on a lot better. If it doesn't have that, you want to use a lighter line, like a monofilament line, as a backing and then, or if you're going to spool it up all the way with that, you can do it that way. Or like I said earlier, if you're going to use braid with a piece of electrical tape across that, it does the same thing. But I'm going to put braid on this. I recommend using braid as at least a backing. A lot of fishermen, they put like uh, 20 to 50% of their spool as braided line first. Makes the, makes the spool a lot easier to handle, especially if you're using fluorocarbon but it allows for uh, a lot stronger line to be anchored to the spool also. Now, a lot of my rods I actually use braid as a main line all the way through and or a small leader depending on the setup. I'm going to put braided line on here first. And again, the cruciality, this is what I said earlier, you want your line to come off of the spool of line the same way it's going to go onto the spool on the reel. 
So the spool, when you turn the crank on a casting reel, the spool turns opposite direction of the crank. So as I'm turning it this way, the spool is actually turning this way. So the line is cutting over the top and behind of the spool on the reel. So I want the line to come from over the top and behind of the spool of line. So you want your spool to be situated so the line is coming up over the top that way, not from underneath. And casting reels tend to spool a lot better if you have it attached to your rod. So I'm going to leave this attached to the rod. So first, you know, grab the line I'm going to use. So if you're using line as a backing on a casting setup, you want to use a really, you, you, you don't need an expensive braided line. Uh, this is just a spider wire 30 pound braid that I got for like five bucks for the spool. So I use that as a backing for a lot of my uh, casting setups. Get this all pulled out to get it onto the spool. So you guys didn't see it, but it was also really not necessary to show. I just pulled the line through the eyelets and I've got the line here ready to go through the level wind. You're gonna help me out here, Mr. Poncho. So you wanna give yourself plenty of line to work with here. I got plenty of slack here. It doesn't matter. You don't have to keep everything tight as you go because it's gonna go onto the reel all the same. But you put your line through that level wind. This is where you want to give yourself plenty of room to work with here. So I'm pulling a lot of that line through. So what you want to do is you want to get the line through two or three of the holes that are bored into the uh, into the spool of the reel. You don't want to put it directly like one and then right after the next one because that'll put a lot more tension on the knot because these things can be sharp. If you use two or three, it tends to be a lot better. So I'm going to open it up to put it in free spool mode so it's easier to work with. So you can kind of see the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it through one hole. And in free spool mode, I'm going to kind of turn the spool a little bit to let it feed through correctly. Then turn it back toward the front. Grab that line and pull it through. Then lock it back in place. And again, this is where I use a uni knot to tie the line on. A lot easier way to do it, especially on a casting reel, because you use that sort of noose effect that the uh, uni knot has. Get that tightened up, cut the tag end, and then sort of guide the knot down to the spool and get it tight in there. And one of the nice things about these uh, casting reels with those hole with those holes that are bored into it is the knot stays inside that hole so there's a lot less chance of damaging that knot okay so now i'm gonna pull you guys back this way to see i'm gonna start spooling the line on all right so you guys can see what i've done here i've got about 30 percent of that spool as braided line for the backing as an anchor and like i said it would have been awesome to show you guys this real time as I did it, but I used an FG knot to attach the 12 pound tactical fluorocarbon to the 30 pound braid. And this ends up being my main line, the 12 pound fluorocarbon. I like the FG knot a lot more than the uh, double uni knot because it's a lot lower profile knot. Goes through guides a lot smoother. It just takes a lot more time to, to uh, attach together. And away you go. And then you again just you uh, evenly reel so it spools up evenly and same rule applies you want to leave a little bit of space from the uh, top of the spool of line to that wall right there especially if you're using fluorocarbon line because fluorocarbon line does jump off a lot more this is tactical fluorocarbon from p-line it's a lot more supple so you could you can put more on but that's all i need for this uh uh crankbait setup okay so now i'll show you guys how to tune your casting reel based on the lure you're using Sorry, you guys got to see all this junk. You know, our we got a daughter on the way. The house is in transition. So right now it's a little bit of storage. But so what you want to do is you want to get your rod so it is just slightly angled toward the ground. You don't want to completely level and you also don't want to point the tip of your rod to the ground. You want to just slightly less than parallel to the ground so that, so that lure has uh, some room to hang. And then you open up your spool. Okay, you see how fast that fell? That means it is too heavy, so you want to turn the tension knob toward the lure. That tightens the tension. Still a little too tight. Okay, that is good right there. You want your you want your lure to fall softly and gently to the ground, and that's how you keep your reel from backlashing so often when you cast. Is because if you're using a heavy, if you're using a light lure and you go to cast and you put too much power behind the cast, if you don't have it tuned correctly, it's going to come flying off the line. 
and if you're using a heavier lure, you're not going to get a whole lot of distance unless you uh, have your rod tuned correctly. Or sorry, whether you have your reel tuned correctly. And then for tuning the brake system, it really helps to know the lure you're using. I've used this lure before. I know that's where I need the brakes, so I got the brakes just a little bit less than halfway from full. And then if you're going to switch lures, you cut that lure off, you put a new lure on, you got to tune it all over again, the same process. Eventually casting with the casting reel, you get a lot more experience with how you keep your thumb on the spool so you can play with less tension and less brakes, but that requires a lot more experience. That's where I said one of the cons of a casting reel is it requires experience. You got to spend a lot of time using it to learn it. So there you guys go. That's everything you want to know about reels. This video has actually been a long time in the making. I've been trying to make this video for a long time, but every time I've tried making this video, something's gone wrong. Just like last night, I recorded the entire video, and then you know parts the parts of what I recorded for content, the camera just decided not to record on its own. I think this camera is actually breaking after only a year. Pretty disappointing. I know when I was getting into fishing, when I was getting into serious fishing, I wish I had a video like this that explained everything about reels how to spool them, the different mechanisms, how to tune them, you know, it would have made a lot more, or would have made it a lot less trial and error fishing. So, you know, made this video for you guys, everything you should want to know about reels. Yeah, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Any information you guys want to add if you're an experienced angler, any information about reels you want to add, please do so. If you guys like this video, if you guys found this video helpful, please hit the like button on your way out. If you're a new viewer, don't forget to subscribe for all the great content that's going to come from this channel. Hit that little notify bell beside it so you're going to be the first to see it when it comes out. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing.